Hello, my name is Vayujit Gokhale. I teach physics and astronomy at Truman State University, located in Kirksville, Missouri. This is a special 360-degree video format. You may look in any direction you choose. If you're using a browser, just click and drag in the direction you wish to view. In 1994, a large earthquake in Los Angeles caused a major power outage throughout the city. For the first time in decades, a truly dark sky was visible above LA. The result was a rash of panicked calls to 911, asking if the earthquake might have been caused by the strange silver cloud in the sky. Ed Krupp, the director of the Griffith Observatory at the time, told the LA Times, the stars were in fact so unfamiliar, they called the observatory wondering what happened. The real night sky is now so remote, most people have forgotten what it looks like. Considering we live in a country where two-thirds of the population had never experienced seeing the Milky Way, this reaction doesn't seem out of touch. Imagine for a moment that we could somehow switch off all the artificial light in your city. Imagine never having seen the Milky Way going from a sky such as this to a sky such as this. Beautiful, isn't it? The night sky revealed in all its splendor, the Milky Way blazing above our heads against an inky black sky. What we are seeing now is an example of a bottle scale one sky. The bottle scale is a way to estimate sky brightness and interpret how light pollution is affecting your view of night sky phenomena. A bottle scale one sky is something you would experience only in some of the most remote areas of the United States. We started by demonstrating a bottle scale nine sky, the most severe example of light pollution, and moved directly to a bottle sky one, the least severe. Now let's move up the bottle scale gradually and demonstrate the subtleties that are lost at each scale point as the degree of light pollution gradually becomes worse. First of all, we need a common reference, something visible in the night sky at any time of the year from the Northern Hemisphere. We have chosen the area around the North Star or Polaris. Let us show you how to find this location. Look towards the North. Find the asterism of the Big Dipper in the constellation Ursa Major. Now find the end of the pot of the Dipper. Use the two end stars to point towards the North Star or to Polaris. Got it? Okay, at bottle one, we should be able to see all the stars of the Little Dipper plus many dimmer stars near the Little Dipper asterism. The Milky Way should be blazing with dark patches of gas and dust obvious in the star fields. It is so dark at bottle one that the Milky Way casts shadows. Let's start moving up the scale. Passing bottle 2, we see that the faintest stars, the magnitude 7 stars, are no longer visible. Passing bottle 3, the next set of dimmer stars disappear, essentially blending in to the sky background. We start to notice some sky glow at the horizon. This is a typical rural sky, away from any major cities and towns. Passing bottle 4 and bottle 5, stars fainter than magnitude 6 are no longer visible. The finer details of the Milky Way are getting lost. We are moving from typical semi-rural skies to suburban skies. Bottle 6. This is a fairly typical bright suburban sky. We can only see the brightest stars that make up the outline of the Little Dipper. The fainter parts of the Milky Way are lost in the sky glow. Bottle 7. This is a typical urban sky. 
the sky background now appears grayish or yellowish, and even the brightest stars in the cup of the Little Dipper are hard to see. Bottle 8. City skies. Only three or four stars that make up the Little Dipper are now visible. The fainter ones lost in an increasingly grayish sky background, which no longer appears dark. And finally on to Bottle 9. Inner city skies. The entire sky, even the zenith, appears shrouded in a bright glow. Polaris is hard to see, and only a handful of brightest stars in the sky are now visible. We just saw how we are losing our night skies and our ability to admire the sheer beauty and marvel at it. This is especially true in suburban and city skies. Now some of this is inevitable since humans need a certain level of outdoor lighting for their well-being and for their safety. But indiscriminate use of badly designed outdoor lighting means that our dark night skies are quickly vanishing. The next generation may not have an opportunity to experience what we once took for granted. The International Dark Sky Association, the IDA, is a recognized authority on light pollution and, in, and is the leading organization combating light pollution worldwide. The purpose of the IDA is to protect the night from light pollution. The mission of the Missouri chapter of the IDA is to raise awareness about light pollution issues in Missouri, promote quality outdoor lighting, protect our natural environment and our beautiful night skies. Dark sky advocates at IDA Missouri also help educate the public on lowering energy costs by using well-shielded, dark sky-friendly lighting fixtures. If you're concerned about protecting our Missouri skies from light pollution, or just wanting to address lighting issues in your community, there are a number of ways you can get involved. Visit the IDA website at darksky.org and the Missouri IDA website at darkskymissouri.org to access useful resources and information related to the problem and solutions of light pollution. There are a number of ways you can take actions, and if you pan down, you will find the information required to contact us. Remember, you are an important force for protecting the night. Thank you for listening.